New videos coming up soon on JGA and JG7. Been moving apartments to build the all new JG9 Studios, which has put things on the back burner for just a little bit, but we're going to be back in business very shortly. Make sure to check the link in the description to join those channels now. And now, on with our feature presentation. A while ago, I made a video about this man right here, the legendary Miami Dolphins and Hall of Fame fullback, Larry Zonka. You can learn more about this situation by clicking the card in the upper right corner. However, here's a brief rundown of what happened. Back in 1969, Larry Zonka was dealing with some health issues, as he had suffered quite a few injuries in a short period of time. And with concerns for his health circling, a local newspaper reported that Zonka was going to retire. The only problem? Zonka had no idea about this and look at the report like the man who wrote it had three heads. He picked up the newspaper, saw the report in the front of the sports section that he was retiring, and in reality, that couldn't be further from the truth, as retirement was not on Zonka's mind whatsoever. The whole situation was incredibly bizarre, because I can't even imagine how awkward it must be to learn about your retirement, which is your own call, in a newspaper when that's not even true. Well, if I had a nickel for every time I knew of that happening in NFL history, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Because this man right here is St. Louis Rams quarterback Chris Miller. And during the 1995 preseason, Miller, after suffering another injury, was in the center of retirement talks that quite simply were not true. And when Miller found out about this, and found out that the media had incredibly shoddy reporting, and essentially lied to create some drama, well, let's just say that Chris Miller, understandably so, was not a happy camper. Not in the slightest bit. Because this is the story behind the feud between Rams starting quarterback Chris Miller and the St. Louis media. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand just who Chris Miller is, and what his history was prior to the moment that drew a ton of controversy. Oddly enough, this is not the first time I've done a video on Chris Miller, as even though he is a quarterback, I talked about the time in a 1989 game against the San Francisco 49ers that he kicked a field goal, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. Having said that, Miller was an awfully solid quarterback for the Falcons for a long period of time, as not only is he a top 5 quarterback in franchise history, but you could make a legitimate argument that behind Matt Ryan and Steve Barkowski, he might be the best, although he's got some competition with Chris Chandler and Michael Vick. He guided the Falcons to the playoffs in 1991, and made it to the Pro Bowl that season after finishing 3rd in the league in passing touchdowns. He was second in the league in passer rating in 1992. He had multiple seasons where he finished inside the top 10 of the league in passing yards. And he was just an awfully good and awfully clutch quarterback for the Falcons around the turn of the decade. However, by this point in his career, as you can tell, he's on a different NFC West team, as he traded the black and red of the Atlanta Falcons for the yellow and blue of the Rams whether they were in Los Angeles in 1994, or in St. Louis in 1995 at the time of this story. And the 1994 season for Miller posed both good and bad news, both from a personal perspective and a team perspective. The good news for Miller was that, honestly, he wasn't any worse than he usually was with the Falcons. Over his final 10 games of that 1994 season, he threw 14 touchdown passes, with a passer rating of 78.4 and a completion percentage of just under 57%. That's pretty much right in line with what he was doing in Atlanta. If anything, from a numbers perspective, it might have been a bit better. Granted, a lot of that came in garbage time because the Rams were really bad that year, so he padded his numbers that way in the second half of games. However, the Rams expected Chris Miller, and they got Chris Miller. I can't really say he played below expectations, because he played pretty much exactly like he played throughout his time in Atlanta, 
minus that great 1991 season of his. The bad news, however, was twofold. Number one, his team stunk. It's never fun to lose, and Chris Miller did a heck of a lot of losing during that 1994 season. In his 10 starts, the Rams went just 2-8, and eight, and they lost his final five starts. As a team, the Rams went 4-12, and 12, finishing with the second worst record in the NFC and one of the worst records in football. And making things sting even more was that after a semi-respectable start to the season at 4-5, where you're still right in the thick of things if you can play good football down the stretch, the Rams completely crumbled, leaving Los Angeles on an extremely sour note by losing their final seven games of the season. As for Miller, the bad news for him from a personal level had to do with injuries. Lots and lots of injuries. Unfortunately, by this point, even though Miller was talented, he was more known for spending time off the field than he was for spending time on the field, as he dealt with tons of concussions and injuries. As one writer said, Chris Miller came to the Rams with a reputation as an injury-prone quarterback. In that sense, at least, he is not disappointed. At least when he got hurt with the Falcons in 1992 and 1993, it was injuries to his knee and not his head. But in 1994, he was dealing with even more injuries than he had before. Along with a shoulder injury that he suffered during the Rams game against the 49ers on September 18th, he had a concussion on October 23rd against the New Orleans Saints that forced him to miss two weeks. And then, on December 4th, in the second game against the Saints, he suffered another concussion when he got slammed to the turf and his head took a hard hit. As Miller said after that one, I got dinged. I guess I got my head slammed. I remember what happened after I got hurt, but I don't remember much of what happened before it. By this point, Miller's health was a serious issue. Forget whether he was good enough to be the starting quarterback for the team in St. Louis in 1995. The real question was whether he would be healthy enough to do it. New head coach Rich Brooks was optimistic about his quarterback, saying, I know he's had an unbelievable string of bad luck and injuries, with two major knee surgeries, and then the concussion problems he had this past year. Certainly, a healthy Chris Miller was an outstanding quarterback. I think the last healthy year he had, he was in the Pro Bowl. So there isn't any question he has the talent. However, it wouldn't take long for the injury-prone tag to follow Chris Miller from Los Angeles to St. Louis. Because in the first quarter of the team's first preseason game against the Seattle Seahawks, sure enough, he was kneed in the helmet and suffered yet another concussion. Miller was taken to Providence Hospital in Seattle and was held there overnight. The bad news was that, obviously, this was another concussion, which is what Miller was becoming all too known for at this point. Said Rams quarterback and former Super Bowl XXVI MVP Mark Rippon on his teammate, over the last three or four years, quarterbacks in general are having a lot of concussions. The brain is a very precious instrument, and it's hard to really say why some are more susceptible than others. Chris has got a case of it where it can flare up, so it is a concern. It's more of a concern from a human standpoint than going out there and making a lot of plays and being glorified. I feel terrible for him. However, the good news at least was that this one, from all accounts, was not as bad. He was released from the hospital shortly after, and while he was still feeling the effects the next day, he was with the team and the symptoms were described as mild. This was nothing like the concussions that plagued him throughout the 1994 season, where he had to miss some time. He was back out there relatively quickly. However, despite this concussion not being too bad compared to the others, it was time for Miller to hang it up and call it a career. And that's when a St. Louis television station went on the air on Monday night, 48 hours after the game, and citing unnamed Rams players as sources, said that Chris Miller was going to hang it up. He was giving up football. 
and the Rams were going to need to find a new starting quarterback. It was the top story of the sports segment of the news station that Chris Miller was calling it a career after yet another concussion. The former first round pick was done. And honestly, it makes sense as to why now would be the time for Miller to hang it up. His brain was taking an absolute beating by this point, and it seemed like he couldn't get through a game healthy. He had to think about his long-term career and his body. So for Miller to hang it up made sense. But there was that television station reporting on this as a fact and reporting that Chris Miller was done. And even though the writing might have been on the wall, there was one person in particular that was surprised by this report. That person? Oh yeah, Chris Miller. Chris freaking Miller. Because as it turns out, that report was a complete lie. Miller was watching the news at home on Monday night and saw, sure enough, that he was retiring. Even though he wasn't. He was good enough to throw on Tuesday. He was going to be right back with the team. And when Miller showed up to camp on Tuesday, oh, you can bet that he was flaming mad. Especially because the reporters never asked him directly and cited completely anonymous sources in extremely shoddy journalism. Miller found the station that reported on the news and approached the reporter, saying, Are you the station that aired the report that I was going to retire? When the reporter said that yes, we were the station, Miller lashed out in a tirade, as you can understandably expect one to do when completely false information about them is reported on as a fact. Said Miller to the station in a rather aggressive tone, Kind of a shame when someone takes the liberty, when someone just comes along and says on a live telecast, without talking to the main source, they're going to say that I'm thinking of retiring. That's nonsense. Although he didn't use the word nonsense. You can leave the rest to your imagination and pick a word starting with either bull or horse. As he said, that's not even a factor at all right now. Yep. Chris Miller was never going to retire. The report truly came out of nowhere. Now, Miller did acknowledge that the concussions were getting concerning, with Miller saying that his wife was getting concerned, and saying, I'm getting tired of laying in those tubes and doing those MRIs for 40 to 45 minutes with clunky sounds and all of that. However, he said that he was working with representatives for Athletic Helmet Inc., to work on creating a specialized helmet for him to deal with hard hits, and said that if and when he decided to retire, he let the fans know personally. His career was not done. Far from it. And if he was going to retire, it wouldn't be through a television station that had no credible sources whatsoever. Now, the bad news for Miller was that he continued to suffer concussions during the 1995 season, and at the advice of multiple doctors following the conclusion of the season, he did hang it up, at least for the time being. However, obviously, this retirement did not happen at the start of the 1995 season before a regular season game was played, when Miller actually played some of his best football, throwing seven touchdowns and no interceptions over the first four games as the Rams went 4-0, with Miller posting a passer rating of 97.8. It really is a shame, because when Miller was healthy, as you can tell, he was a very good quarterback. However, this was a case of a guy who could have truly had a fantastic career that got derailed due to injury after injury. Still, this exercise should go as a valuable lesson to everyone, especially in today's day and age. If you are a media outlet, and you're going to report on something, especially live on local television with a large platform, make sure you have reputable sources. Make sure you're not just making things up completely out of thin air. If the subject of your story is angry at you because you lied about something that clearly was not true, you reported on it as a fact, and you didn't bother to check with anyone about it, then clearly you messed up and failed the number one job of a journalist. Because to start off the 1995 season, 
Not only was Chris Miller having to deal with a hostile fan base, another injury in the long list of them, but as if he didn't have enough on his plate as it was, he was having to deal with a dishonest media organization. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.